Hello, welcome to Saturday's class. I'm just going to adjust the screen slightly because I'm having to stand practically on the stairs to get my head in. There we go, that's a bit better. Um, as you can see, all is peace and quiet today. The, uh, the dog is at my, my daughter's house, so I've got a little bit of peace and quiet today. Um, I wondered what to talk about today, but then I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll... Do you remember a long, long time ago when we first started lockdown? You can cast your mind back that far. Uh, we talked about, I talked about sarcopenia. And you'll remember that it's the, the sarcopenia is the muscle wastage that comes with, with old age, I'm afraid. If you don't use your muscles, they um, start to lose muscle mass. And they lose muscle mass at the rate of about 10%. On average, it's 10% per decade, or it's 8% when you're younger, but then it accelerates, obviously, as you get older. Well, it's not obvious, but it, you know what I mean. Uh, so in your 60s, 70s and 80s, it's, it, it's 10, 12% maybe even. And um, you maybe don't notice because a lot of the time the muscle is replaced by fat. Muscle can't turn to fat, but muscle wastes away and can be replaced by fat. Um, so you often hear about people who've done a lot of exercise and they say, oh, the muscle turned to fat. No, the muscle wasted away because it wasn't being used. And then the fat replaced it. And that's why you see older people with very thin arms and legs, just because they've got no, no muscle. And the, the way you first notice really muscle wastage in your legs is it's more difficult to get up and down stairs. You have to start using the banister until eventually you maybe can't go up and down stairs, get up and down stairs. And that's one of the reasons that we do this, the stand-ups and the squats. But anyway, so that's sarcopenia. But the other thing that I feel quite strongly about is about the amount of protein that we eat. Because diet and health are inextricably linked. And um, it used to be thought that older people didn't need so much protein. The younger people are growing, they're putting on muscle children. Uh, whereas once you're older, you don't need you're not as active, maybe. You don't need as much protein. Now, the thinking on that has changed. And they now think that you need more protein than younger people because, A, we don't use it as efficiently, apparently. Our bodies are just aren't quite as efficient as young people's. And so the take-up of protein isn't quite as good. Protein is used for putting on muscle, repairing muscle, repairing tissues. So it's a vital part of the diet. Um, so you need protein... Um, yes, we don't use it quite sufficiently. Um, and also, we, because of this muscle wastage, we need a bit more protein to be able to put on, to keep our muscles as they were. Obviously, exercise does that, but eating more protein. So you think, well, how much is, how much is protein? How much protein should I be getting? Uh, and the current rule of thumb recommendation is that you should have protein at every meal. So have three meals a day and you should have about 25 grams of protein at every meal. And you're thinking, well, how much is flipping 25 grams of protein? Well, to give you an example, an egg is 13 grams. So if you had two eggs for breakfast, that's your protein for that meal. If you maybe had um, some salmon for lunch or... Um, Nuts, or if you're vegetarian, you'd have to have sort of look up the, the, the uh, nuts, lentils, pulses, that sort of thing. You need more of those um, than you would of if you eat, eat meat or dairy. Cheese is quite high in protein. 100 grams of cheese, ooh, I can't remember, it's about 25 grams, I think. So if you made a cheese sauce, cauliflower cheese sauce, something like that. Um, so you should really have protein at every meal. A couple of bits of toast with a cup of tea in the morning is not really a proper breakfast. I mean, I follow this low-carb diet, as you probably know. And, I mean, the great thing about a low-carb diet is you can have, when I say the full English, you can't have the full English because you can't have the beans. I can't. I don't have the beans because they're full of sugar. Uh, and I don't have toast. But I have. I can have eggs and mushrooms and um, bacon and things like that. So I, I do quite like a fry-up. So if you take nothing away from today, just up your protein. Protein also keeps you fuller for longer. So if you have a couple of bits of toast, 
if I had a couple of bits of toast or cornflakes or something like that, remember I talked about how the starch converts into sugar in your in your body. Um, if I had a couple of bits of toast, I'd be starving at 11, is it, 11 o'clock. Um, whereas if I have, um, I quite like, uh, in the morning, I quite like eggs and smoked mackerel because it's a bit like kippers for a smoked mackerel. And that keeps me going till about three o'clock in the afternoon, actually. And then I sometimes have, a, I have my evening meal about four o'clock and then I won't eat until the next day. Um, so protein really does. Feel it stops all the because you're not having a, a surge of insulin and then a drop in insulin. You don't get hungry. Insulin is a hunger hormone. Um, so anyway, it's 1101 and that's all I'm going to say about protein. But up your protein. Um, sounds like a slogan, that, doesn't it? Uh, right. Let's get started today. Hi. <laughs> the haircut was my daughter, Delia. I just thought, oh, I can't. I can't have my hair. I usually have it really short. It's a bit shorter on top than I would like. But And my earrings are ecological. They're, they're done by my daughter bought them for me. Another daughter. I have lots of daughters. She bought me them. It's, it's a tree. She's a, a bit of an ecologist. She's a bit of a jack of all trades. Tra she's an ecologist and a plumber. And anyway, she bought me these. So thank you. Right. Um, let's get to it. Uh, so, as usual, um, nice and nice and gentle. Um, nice uh, using your arms. I, my mind is wandering. Yes. So, nice and gentle. Legs, feet hardly lifting off the floor. On your toes if you can. Nice and thingy on your toes. Shoulders working. Maybe do a bit of an exaggerated um, arm movement. And then stop, hands on shoulders, up. Remember, if you can't get your arms up to your ears, just go as far as you can. If you need to do it in the chair, do it in the chair. If you can stand, standing is better because it's better for your core, it's better for your balance, it's better for your muscles. Remember, those all important muscles. We want to keep those muscles strong. Exercise to be strong, not to be pretty or thin or anything. We want to be strong old women. Right. What was that? I, I, had, um, I had a thing called STROP. Strong older people, I think it was, or something. I'm always doing acronyms and puns. Right. And then out to the side, back in, forward, back. This time, get a little walk, down, out, in, forward, back. Last time, up, down, out, in, forward, back. i tell you one thing, just to sort of digress slightly, I've started doing is putting my hands, just remember this one, putting your hands just behind your ears. Don't. Don't push your head forward. Your hands on, are only just resting there. They're not pushing. And just holding your hands here. This is a bit awkward to do when you're out because you look a bit peculiar. But just do that for 30 seconds. And it really straightens your back and your shoulders. And it really improves your posture. I've started doing this because I, I tend to when I walk. Even though I talk a good talk, I don't always walk a good walk. Do you see what I did there? And I tend to... Have, lean forward a little bit and my hip flexors here are getting a little bit shortened you know when you see people walking like this it's because the hip flexors are not flexible so if you do that and just you can do it around the house just do it for 30 seconds every now and again it really straightens you up right so hand on your shoulder remember you make it into a wing Pencil there, and we're going to draw an imaginary circle. So we're going to go one, two, I should have explained to any new people, three, four, five, and then forward. This is the warm up. One, two, three, four, five. We'll do this for about 10 minutes, uh, the warm up, and then there's the main body of the exercise, and then we're going to do some stretching. So one, Nice full range of movement. 
Nice and controlled and slow. Three, four, five. I'm definitely not as mobile with this shoulder. One, two, concentrate on that big circle. Three, four, five. Fabulous. Right, with posture in mind, we're going to do this one where you raise one hand up to your ear if you can and the other one behind you and then we're going to alternate them. Okay, remember it's just your it's just your shoulders, just your arms that move. Your body doesn't rock backwards and forwards. Start with your hands on your thighs and we're going to go. That's one. Two. Three. Four. This is good for your back as well. Back muscles. Five. Six. So it's mobilizing your shoulders. Seven. And strengthening your back muscles. Eight. Nine. Ten. Well done. Right. We're going to go into doing heel digs, just very gently. And at the same time, anchor your elbows into your waist. And as you do a heel dig, the opposite arm, you're going to do a bicep curl. So you're doing a bicep curl and a heel dig at the same time. So you have to start concentrating. And just have a look down to make sure that you are doing opposite arm and leg. Okay, so we do three, two, one. Next, we're just going to take a step out to the side. Camera's maybe a bit high, actually. And at the same time, prayer hands. And as you go out, push out with your arms. And these exercises are all mobilizing your joints. Uh, improving your balance, improving your coordination and memory, and improving the strength of your legs. Three, and your arms. Two, one. Next one we're going to do, if you're in the chair, you'll just have to do the arms of this one. You won't be able to do the feet and the legs. We're just going to take... Start off by taking a step back. Not very far, it's not big steps. None of these are big steps. And at the same time, we're just having the, starting the hands at the chest and pushing out. Sit. Spread your fingers, give your hands a bit of a jazz hands. Three, two, one. And then finally, we're going to do toe tap. Just a very gentle toe tap. And the same thing, a bicep curl with the opposite arm. Three, two, one. Right. Just for about three or four rounds, we're just going to put them all together. So this is where you need to start concentrating, and I do as well. So we do heel digs, out to the side, back, toe tap. Another one. Heel dig, side. Back, toe tap, heel dig, side, back, toe tap. One last time. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. <sighs> and that concludes the warm up. It's not cold today, so I hope you're. Oh, sufficiently warmed up and raring to go. Uh, now, just because I'm getting a bit fed up with ploughing through the same thing, what we're going to do is going to shake it up a little bit and we're going to go from the last one up to the first one, like we uh, reverse the order. So we're going to start with a side bend. 
Uh, at least it gets it out of the way. My least favourite one. So you're starting with your feet at hip width apart or slightly wider than hip width apart. And remember, if you're going to do your arm, hold it straight so that you're actually controlling it, actively using it. Okay? So, and breathing on this one makes it easier. So if you breathe in when you're coming up, breathe out when you're going down. Ah, we're going to do 10 on each side. Ready? Right. So, oh, 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 can't get very far down at the moment. Oh, one, two, oh, three, four, five. Oh, dear me. Six, seven, eight. If you can't, if you've got problems with your shoulders, don't you don't need to put your arm above your head. Nine. Oh, ten. Oh, and then the other side. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Whew. Well, I'm glad that's out of the way. Except now we have to do squats. So remember, a squat is sitting down without the chair. So if you can't do um, a freestanding squat with good technique, which is feet hip width apart, knees not coming in like that, knees staying wide, knees not going over your toes, it's back sitting like that. And you can only, you need only go down this far if you can, or you can go down further. It's up to you. If you're in the chair, remember, the object of the exercise is to have your knees at 90 degrees, have your ankle under your knee, knees wide apart, don't let your knees come in, and you stand up, and then you sit down. I've got something wrong with this knee, that's why I'm plonking a bit. Um, or if you can't do that, use your arms to swing, or failing that, put your hands on your knees and stand up. So we're going to do 10. And when you do it, if you're doing the freestanding squat, look straight ahead. Don't look at the floor if you can. And at the top, we're going to put, just touch our hands behind our uh, back so that our pelvis comes forward a bit, which stretches those hip flexors a bit. Right. No more talk, Rosemary. We ready? So we're going down. One. Two. Three. There's something wrong with this knee and I get so far down and it feels like it's going to break, not break, but I'm just going to go down there. Four. So you can see when I turn sideways, I'm only going down to there. Five. Oh, I'm not doing that, am I? Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Oh, ten. Both knees are doing it. I don't know why. I get down so far and it feels as if they're going to give way. Right. Triceps. So you need your band for this. If you don't have a band, just do the, the actions without the band. Uh, but a band makes this one more effective. 
So this is the one, remember, where you, you're exercising the muscles on the back of your arm and you're holding this one at the back. This controls the tension on the band. If you can, this arm is like this. And remember, it's just your forearm that goes up that moves to the ceiling. If you've got problems with your shoulders, bring your hand to your chest and push down to the floor. Again, it's just your forearm that's moving. Your upper arm moves a little bit on this one, but and we're going to do 10 on each side. So we're ready. Feet hip width apart. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then switch over. We're ready. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Oh, good one. Right. Next one. I'm just going to have a look and see what people are saying. <laughs> um, I'll try, Prue. I'll, I'll have a wee think. Um, yes, so we're doing the abs one now. So sitting in the chair. Ah, see, I have to put my hands on my knees then because my on my thighs to sit down because my knees, for some reason, would have given way. Anyway, sit as far forward on the chair as you can. Legs parallel, ankles under your knees, 90 degrees knees, ankles under your uh, knees. Hands in front like this, holding onto your arms. And we're going to go back and we're going to just brush the chair. We're not going to rest our weight on it. Keep your back straight as well. We're going to do 10 of these. Uh, and when you do it, come forward a little bit. So we're st sitting upright. We're going to go back. Touch. One. Back. Nice and slow and controlled. Two. Keep your feet on the floor. Back. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back and touch the back of the chair and then lift the back about a millimeter off and then we're going to just raise one foot just straighten your leg you don't need to lift your thigh you're just straightening moving your lower leg two toe pulled back three so it's just your lower leg that's moving in this four plus you're bracing here five six Seven. This is helping your thigh muscles as well. Eight. Nine. Ten. And then the other leg, if you can, without straightening up or releasing the tension on your abs. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, 
How was that? Did you manage it? Did you manage without either resting on the chair or sitting forward? If you can't do 10 of the exercises, then it's obviously, uh, it, well, it might not be obvious to you. Um, however many you can do is fine. And then 10 is something to aim for. Uh, upward row. Right. If you don't have a band, this is the one where you hold your thumb and you get that V here and it's your elbows that come up first. Now, it doesn't matter whether you get your, your hands there or only to there. It's technique that's important. So you've got to keep the V. It's no point in getting, getting your hands to your chin if your elbows are down here. It's got to be that way. If you're using the band, remember, you stand on it, feet hip width apart, cross it over. And then, so you've still got that V. And when you bring your arms up, you've still got the V. Your forearm, your wrist, and your hand should be in alignment. Don't don't try and don't don't have your wrist. If you're struggling and your wrists are like that, just don't be so ambitious with the height. We're going to do ten. So one, nice and slow. Two, don't boing it back. Control the descent. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How was that? Right, we're doing the one leg balance now. Now I know I said that I was going to alternate the swinging with the lifting. Um, but I don't think I am. I think I'm just going to stick with the lifting. Um, because if you find this easy, then when we do the lifting, you can straighten instead of lifting higher. And if you find it difficult, that's good. You need to practice more. So we're going to engage core. So blow out. Pull your navel into your backbone as hard as you can. And then release slightly. Hands on hips. And rem oh, sorry, you can relax your core. We're going to go one leg up like that. If you can, get your... Uh, thigh parallel to the floor. If you can't, you can only get it to there. It's absolutely fine. And then just lift it a little bit higher. If it's parallel, lift it a bit higher. Try not to, when you do that, try not to do that. Your core, your torso, nice neutral spine. Okay? If you're hardcore, you can do that. And instead of lifting, straighten. That's pretty hardcore, though. Quite difficult. Takes quite a lot of muscle power here. Right, so after all that, breathe out. Pull your navel into your backbone as hard as you can and then relax slightly. Hands on hips and we're going to go up and then up a bit more and then down. When you put your leg down, try not to put your weight on it. Up, oops, falling here. Up, down, two, up. Up, three, need to concentrate, up, four, five, whoops, six, seven, up, whoops, up, eight, nine, last one, last one on that side anyway, right, again, breathe out, navel into your backbone, relax it slightly, pull up your pelvic floor as well, everything all nice and neat and tight, 
and then we're going to go up, up, and down. That's one, up, up, two, up, three, four, five, six, anybody straightening their legs, seven, eight, nine, one more, Ten. Well done. I was better on that side because I was concentrating. Right. Bicep curl. Get your band. If you don't have a band, again, do the actions without the band. So I'm going to stand sideways so as you can see what I'm doing. Standing on the band with both feet and you want enough tension. You anchor your elbow like that and you want enough tension so that when you're holding your hand there, the, 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 you're having to actively hold the band up. If it's right at the end like that, it's no point at all. You want your this muscle, your bicep, constantly under a bit of tension. And then all you do without rocking again, pelvis, um, pelvis obsessed today, the torso stays, doesn't rock, and you just close your arm like that. So we're going to do, uh, try and get your hand, your arm sort of to there. And we're going to do 10. So we're going to do one, nice and slow and controlled. Two, don't let the band pull your arm down. You place it down. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. So you can make that one as, as have as much tension as you like on the band, or get heavier bands. It's up to you. You might find it easier if you've got arthritis in your hands. Some people find the weights or the bands with the um, handles easier. Right. So the other one, we're going to do one, two. Three, and if you look at this muscle, this muscle is tightening. Four, five, you can feel it. Six, seven, that's why we anchor the elbow. Eight, so that only the forearm is moving. Nine, and the bicep has to pull it up. Ten. A good one. Right. Remember I said about not when you're doing a squat, not letting your knees go in. Well, that's because the, the knees go in because these muscles at the side of your hips aren't strong enough. So we're going to do an exercise to strengthen them now. And it's this one, just lifting your leg. But remember, your leg just lifts as it is. It doesn't turn to the side. So your foot, when you lift your leg, your foot is point, always points in the same direction. It doesn't change direction at all. And you don't lean over. You're not aiming to get your leg as high as possible. You're just aiming to get your leg up like that and use these muscles here. So we're going to do 10 on each side. So you can hold on. It's not a balancing exercise. You will move slightly to the side, but don't sort of lean right over. All right, so. And hold it there. One, don't put your weight on it when you come down, when you bring it down if you can. Two, and place it down. Don't let gravity help you. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
And then I'm going to move the chair. We're doing the other side. Ready? One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Well done. Whew. I find that tiring on both legs. Oh yeah, the next one we're going to do, the penultimate one, is uh, the rowing one. Now remember, you sit, sit on the chair, right on the edge of the chair, feet out, toes pulled back, put the loop the band around the instep of your foot, and have have quite a lot of tension on the band. Don't hold the band at the end. Sitting up nice and straight. Uh, it's only your arms that move on this one. I'm just going to come here to show you how your arms move. So your legs are out in front of you. The band is in your instep. And you're going to pull your arms back, not out like this or up like this. Your hands skim your thighs and your elbows are close to your side. And you're going to hold it there. Uh, there's a pound coin between your shoulder blades and you don't want to let it go. And we're going to do 10. So it's only your arms. Don't rock backwards and forwards. And your feet stay on the ground the whole time. So one, two. You can have a fairly... Uh, if you've got three, if you've got bands of varying strengths, you're going to have quite a strong band for this one. Four, because you're using both arms. Five, six, remember slow and controlled. Seven, eight, nine. Ten. There we go. Right. Now we're going to do another ten squats, which I'm not looking forward to because of my knee. So if you assume the position, feet just slightly wider than hip width apart, and off we go. So I'm just going to go down that far. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Got a little bit, little bit better towards the end there. Right. We're still going to end up with our little sort of dancey routine. Uh, we'll go through it slowly and then we'll speed it up as the imaginary music in my head starts to flow. Right. So we're doing heel digs. Side. Oh, just let me get rid of the chair. He's not always conscious of the fact I'm just about kicking it. So heel digs. Side, back, toe tap. Don't worry, heel dig, if you can't get this when we go faster. It will come. It's great for coordination and memory. And then heel dig, side, back, and toe tap. We'll do it one more time slowly. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Right, let the music flow and off we go. So heel, side, back, toe tap. Heel dig, 
side, back, toe tap. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Heel, side, back, toe. Heel, side, back, toe. Heel, go a bit faster, side, back, toe. Heel, side, back, toe. You go faster, heel, side, back, toe. Heel, side, I have to take smaller steps, back, toe. One more time, heel, side, back, so, it inevit inevitably gets a little bit sloppier the faster you go. Right, we're going to do stretching now. Whew. Quite puffed after that, which is good. Gets your heart going a little bit. So, we're going to stretch the calf. Front leg bent, back leg straight. <clears throat> Make sure your feet are both pointing in the same direction. Have a look at your feet. Don't assume that they're doing what you want them to do. Back leg is straight, heel is on the ground, and we lean forward. The more you lean forward, the uh, more the stronger the stretch. So you can control it. And then we're going to very gently bend the back knee, and your heel comes off the ground, and you should feel the uh, stretch going down into your Achilles tendon. We'll hold that for a couple more seconds. And then switch legs. Again, check your feet just to make sure that they are where you think they are. I learned from experience that sometimes people's limbs and feet tend to have a life of their own or a mind of their own. And then we we'll gently bend the back knee. The heel comes off the ground and the, uh, you'll feel the stretch moving down into the Achilles. And then standing up. Right, we're going to do stretch the quadriceps, the thigh muscles. So remember, if you can, grab your foot, your shoe, your uh, trouser leg, your sock, your ankle, if you can. And standing up nice and straight, have your knees together. You should feel the stretch down there. If you can't do that, do this. Do some dynamic stretching, which means that doing this is stretching that muscle. It's entirely up to you as to which you do. They're both effective. Sometimes I find doing this one twists my knee slightly. And so I prefer the dynamic stretching because this knee, my left knee, isn't 100%. Too much running, I think. Right, if you're doing dynamic stretching, keep doing it. If you're doing static stretching, switch legs. See if you can kick your hands. Right. Okay. Right, we're going to do that hamstrings now, which are the big muscles at the back of your legs. And sitting down, I'll go back a bit so as you can see. Again, sitting at the edge of the seat, knees at 90 degrees. Ankles under the knees, one leg forward, toes pulled back, sit up nice and straight, lean forward from the, uh, from the hips, not the waist. And then sit up and swap legs. Remember, 
It's how far down you can get, not how far down anybody else can get. Sitting up nice and straight, lean forward from the hips, not from the waist. Keep your toe pulled back. And then sitting up, standing up in fact, hands out to the sides, uh, palms facing forward. And then remember, we're going round the tree. So your arms are like that. They're not uh, like that. Hang on, something's just popped up. Let me see if it's just, oh, heck. Hang on just a moment. I forgot to plug it in. It's gone into battery saver mode. I'll be with you in a second. Uh, that's better. Oh, I'm glad it warned me. Right, where were we? Oh, yes. So, round the tree, hands at um, chest, sorry, shoulder height, and then dip your head. And then put your hands behind your back. If you can, interlock your, interlock your fingers. If you can't, just try and get your elbows as near to each other as they can. If you're interlocking your fingers, pull your hands up like that. If you're just trying to get your elbows together, <coughs> imagine you've got pound coin is back between your shoulder blades. And just try and get yourself a nice stretch across your chest. Okay, and then we're going to stretch the deltoids, these muscles here. So just put one hand across, across your chest, placing the other hand just above your elbow. Just push that. If you've got any problems with your shoulders, this might not be possible for you, because if it hurts, don't do it. I don't really like this stretch very much, I have to say. I don't know why I do it, really. I don't, I'm not sure it gives any benefit. And then switch arms. And then because we worked our triceps, we're going to stretch those. So have your hand up there and put it back down your, your back if you can. If not, just do the best you can. And then take the other hand and push the elbow back so that you're getting a stretch here. You can either put it above your head or have it here, whatever works for you. But try not, to, try not to push your head forward like this. Try and stand upright. It's just your arm that moves. Again, if you've got problems with your shoulders, might not be possible. And then release, and we'll do the other one. Okay. All right, get your chair. Sitting in the chair. Try and do it without using my arms this time. Well, it's better. The squats made it slightly better. Right. Just dip your head. Put your hand on your crown. But don't push. Just let the weight of your hand push down. It's just stretching the back of your neck and actually all down your back. And then look up. We're going to turn our head to the side. Not just your head, not your shoulders. Note where your shoulder is and your chin is in relation to your shoulder. And then put your hand on your chin. This is for new people. I know people that have been following me for a while know how to do this. Put your hand on your chin. Try and turn your head to the front, but resist with your hand. So you're creating a lot of tension in your neck. Have that sort of fight going on, pushing 
pushing your head one way and trying to push it the other, and then relax totally. Still keep your head turned and see if you can turn your head just slightly more to the left. And hold it there just for a couple more seconds and then bring your head back to the center and then turn your head to the right. Again, hand on chin. Note where your chin is in relation to your shoulder. I'm not as mobile on this side. And then try and turn your head back to the center. Resist with your hand. Have that fight going on. And then relax and see if you can turn your head slightly more. I certainly can on this side, definitely. Hold it there for a couple more seconds. And then bring your head back to the center. And that's it. Uh, and I will see you on Monday. Late arrival, we'll catch up. Lines for you, Elizabeth Robinson. Right. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Angela. <laughs> right. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.